I enjoy the fact that every day is a different day. It's an area of very high um, EAL, English as additional language, um, some complex special educational needs. Um, that diversity brings a real richness to the school. I want to be a professional footballer, oh, yeah. so I need to learn how to read and write. The word dyslexia originates from the Greek, which means difficulty with words. Within the UK population, it's estimated that one in 10 people may have dyslexia in some way. So a child with dyslexia will potentially find it difficult to organize their thoughts, uh, to uh, sequence their ideas, um, but also to listen to large chunks of information. So when we're asking children in classrooms to write a simple answer, for some people, all of that may be a little bit too much. A child who has difficulties with any form of literacy skill or language isn't lazy. They may take a lot more time to do something because they take the time to process. And I think that it's really important that teachers are aware of that. His most important strength is definitely his imagination and his creativity. The most spectacular trip to the British History Museum. Good boy. Whilst uh, a labelling in some senses can be helpful, it's actually unpicking what tools do they need to enable them to access learning. Some of those will be dyslexic friendly strategies, but some might be for other types of special educational needs as well. So having a language rich and early, early support for language development um, is absolutely key for all types of need. If you can hook into the strengths, then that is what is absolutely crucial. If you believe in yourself as a learner, you will out-achieve what you think it was ever possible. How many claps in elephant? Elephant. Good, good try. Elephant. So there's early intervention when the child first enters the school system in reception, and that's a really key critical learning time. However, early intervention is also about intervening when a child has difficulty with something that they are learning. In which case, early intervention, at that particular moment in time, by the teacher to correct a misunderstanding is essential. It's then a case of building some evidence up to help to support a better understanding of that child's learning needs and perhaps seeking advice from colleagues within school it's making sure that that language rich environment strands through every subject. They're being very much language aware and let's explicitly teach some strategies to help with spelling but also to help with the understanding of vocabulary um, so that that richness comes through and that actually then brings that love of reading as well which is so important. Hmm. Why don't they decide if they don't want to do a private detective then? What does detective mean? Detective means like is one person that's basically is a policeman and then he's trying to discover things. That's right, similar to a policeman. So teachers need to be aware of the language that they are using in class and in doing so they need to think of the key core curriculum words that they are going to use and they're going to need to make sure that they are incorporated into an, a learning activity of themselves. When the child sits down to work independently, and independence is a key attribute, they need to be able to use an appropriate range of tools. Off you go. You mean Ghostbusters? Great emphasis there, good. Children with dyslexia and the children in my class, they, have, they love the routine. So every day I'll make sure we have that same routine and we keep to the same timetable. I make sure all my slides are a consistent colour so they don't flick between, as sometimes the colours can affect children with dyslexia. Um, I make sure there's lots of visuals on there, not just for children with dyslexia, but actually for all children. Kiss and 
The other strategies that have been really helpful there is actually having the extra time, not over rescuing the child or the young person by jumping in and giving the answer. When we do exciting topics, and the children create a lot of noise because they're really excited about it. Sometimes I would find Tamaro finds it a little bit too much. He likes to have, have that time to process the information and a little time away to quietly understand what he's got to do. Then he can get excited about it. It's really important to talk to the group as a whole, talk to that child with dyslexia and just get them to repeat back the instructions they've got to do. Repetition is particularly important for all children, and in particular in our context where we have a, a high EAL percentage as well. And it's been very mindful that um, children with English as a second language as well could, could equally be dyslexic. Hello, my name is Christopher. Technology can be supportive if you have access to, to that. That can be as simple as a talk card just uh, a few pounds, a child being able to record their voice and play it back. It enables the child or young person to be very independent in their learning. So there are lots and lots of tools out there. Word banks, uh, recording devices of different types to help the child to be able to remember what they are thinking, because when they can speak it, they can write it. But sometimes there's a, a lot of the memory in between those two processes. Colourful semantics is a strategy that enables the, the children and young people to, to build up the sentence using a visual hook, using the colour coding, and then they can transfer that strategy into, um, into any area of the curriculum. I often bold the, the, um, particular key words um, to help their understanding so they can really be drawn to those words. Um, I make sure if we're planning a story or doing a maths that involves lots of steps, at the boxes on the worksheets are nicely clearly laid out. Before we start any English, in fact all lessons, I, I always have a discussion with the teaching assistant on maybe some of the areas Damaro might find difficult. She would in advance look at the text before the lesson or prepare a mind map of things that he might find difficult. The whole school strategy is a maths meeting, so it's a daily meeting of 10 to 15 minutes which uh, will be um, all rehearsal of some key skills, um, but also will be linked to previous learning, so an area perhaps that that class has found difficult. So rather than waiting for it to come up again, is actually let's keep that skill alive and let's try and get it into the long term memory so it's really there. The second strategy that we find helpful thinking in particular around maths is if a child hasn't got a quarter concept in the same day, is them having catch-up intervention or catch-up support that very same day. So instead of just providing the child with a whole raft of resources, because there are many things out there that can help the child with any sorts of needs, actually consult and work alongside that child to give them the resources, the materials, the tools and the accommodations that actually help them in order to progress. We unpick by every area of need, whether or not it's SEND, EAL, Pupil Premium, starting to look at those multiple areas and thinking what are the common tools that they need to access all of the lessons throughout, throughout the day. And then we find it very effective if we support the parents to also support at home with exactly the same strategies. So whether or not that's, for example, using colourful semantics and the parents coming in and having a course here with our speech and language team so that they can use the same strategy at home. My main advice for an NQT would be to give children with dyslexia that extra time to process information. To always make sure all your lesson plans are consistent so they get used to that routine and that structure. And to make sure you find out what works best for those individual children. In terms of supporting the teachers, some of the things that are very helpful, and our NQTs equally do that, is lesson study. So you're observing each other and seeing what works in context. That is some of the strongest CPD that you can actually offer.
but you could go onto the whole school send website where you could um, s search under strategies to support cognition and learning um, for example you may be able to find a, uh, an example of uh, how to make a dyslexic friendly worksheet you'll find access to some dyslexia trusts as well where you'll find access to the latest research and the thinking about dyslexia I know I started a, a qualification in dyslexia in my uh, NQT year so it's never too early to, to, to have an interest in, in that area.